Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a little while. I haven't filmed a video since before Thanksgiving and it's been um, a restful time. I really needed to take some time off, but I also felt really, really overstimulated by Cyber Week, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I mean, sales were going on all November and it made me feel anxious both as a content creator and a consumer. So I'm filming this on Wednesday, November 30th, and it's kind of the first day that I feel um, back to normal in a way after this really intense season of marketing and sales. And I'm not saying I didn't make purchases because I did and I like to do my holiday shopping during Black Friday if I can, but there's just something about the intense pressure to to consume and to create content to encourage people to consume, that was really overwhelming to me and um, more so than it's been in years past. And I don't know if it's just because I've been doing this for a couple of years now and I'm, every year you get a little bit more entrenched in you know, the job and the industry, or if it was where my head was at this year, but I just um, had to disengage. I did make a blog post, I shared a couple of things here and there, but overall I just could not um, bring myself to like really, really make content and share enthusiasm to go consume. Obviously content creators are an industry of their own, but they're also, they also can be deeply entrenched with the world of marketing. And I'm not critiquing anyone in particular, but for me, the way I think about my content is that I don't want everything to feel like a sales pitch. I think there's an alternative kind of space that does talk about products, that does talk about sales, that does talk about all of these things, but also allows us to have a sense of agency and individualism and critical thinking when it comes to beauty and the world of beauty and the culture of beauty, which is so much bigger than the industry of beauty. I don't think it's unlike creative industries, any other creative industry or creative endeavor where you have to live in the tension of what it means to have creative freedom and make the thing you want and also be able to make a living and get paid for what you do um, and for the labor, the creative labor that you put into the thing you do. So anyway, I don't have answers. I only have questions. And I was a little bit like in my own head with these questions. There's a way that sale consumer culture makes you feel as though if you don't engage, you've missed out or you um, have lost out on an opportunity, even though you probably made a better decision by not shopping. Again, it's not that I didn't engage at all, but there's something about the way that value and opportunity circulates during Cyber Week that, that often gives you like a tiny, tiny amount of instant good feeling and then leaves you with a residual feeling of bad feeling. I don't know, maybe that's just me. But that's where I've been. So I'm coming back and I'm talking about my November favorites. It somehow also felt like a really long month. I don't know about you, even though it's a 30 day month, it's felt very, very long to me. And even despite all that, I actually have a lot of new favorites, a lot of things I've been enjoying that I, I haven't actually talked about on YouTube here yet. So um, I have makeup, I have skincare, I have hair care. I've got a lot of things to share that I am actually excited about. So let's get into November favorites after this very long intro. Let's start with makeup. I actually have some old favorites as well as some new favorites. And I wanna start with an old favorite, older. This is the Summer Fridays Sheer Skin Tint. And I have really been appreciating this even more now that the weather is cooler and my skin is a little bit more dehydrated, a little bit more combo. This launched in at the end of summer, I think. And I was very oily this summer. Summer. And as soon as the weather shifted, I became a little less oily and more normal, but a little bit more dehydrated. So I'm like oily in the center of my face, but a little more normal on the perimeters of my face. Now that the weather has cooled down and I'm a little bit more combo, I'm really seeing this shine in my routine. It's just such an easy everyday base. It's 
easy to slap on with fingers or a brush. I personally like to use a brush, but you can use any tool that you like. And it's light coverage. It just is enough to balance out any redness in the skin. And it feels so serum-y and nice and lightweight, but it actually does stay in place throughout the day somehow. So I, yeah, I really can't say enough good things about this. I think so many different skin types would love this. I've actually shifted from shade four, which I was using this summer to shade three which is more of my winter shade and um, it's very sheer so there's not a huge difference between the shades but yeah I just can't stop grabbing for this especially on like I have filming days and like not filming days where I'm out in the world doing normal things and not shooting beauty content and this has been a real star in my like real world routine. Next is a newer favorite in my routine and this is the Colfi um, Main Match Concealer and I wear the shade Rose Rush. This is such a surprising concealer to me. So Colfi recently launched in Sephora. They're an Indian inspired, Indian founded, Indian American founded brand, I believe. And I'm really excited to see some more South Asian representation in Sephora's offerings. And this concealer surprised me because the texture is not something I typically go for, but I really love this and I've been reaching for it a ton. So typically I go for really lightweight serum-y concealers with a lot of spread. And this is actually kind of the opposite of that. It is um, a slightly denser, richer, creamier concealer. And again, I mentioned the weather change in my skin becoming a little less oily. And I think that's what's making me appreciate this so much. It has a nice like richness and creaminess to it, but it also has pretty good coverage. So I would say this is like a medium, high medium coverage concealer, but it spreads out really nicely as well. So it gives you the best of both worlds. You get that moisturizing, yummy, creamy quality, especially around the eyes. But I also use this all over my face. I use it to spot conceal if I need, and it gives me a lot of skin-like spreadability. This lineup also has a great offering of olive tones or South Asian, Asian tones. So if you have struggled to find your undertone and you're in that skin range, it might be something to check out because I do think this line is formulated with the intention of addressing undertones that are often underrepresented in other um, shade ranges. My last video was my favorite one and done shadows video. And I want to say thank you for all of the love on that video. I'm just glad to know we're all in the same camp. Everyone loves a one and done eyeshadow. And you gave me such good recommendations that I'm definitely checking out. One of the formulas that I mentioned in that video is the Bodyography, Bodyography Glitter Pigment. And they just launched a new collection of them like the week after I posted that video. So this is called the Chroma Lux Collection. I think it's their holiday collection and there are four new shades of the glitter pigment. If you're not familiar with the formula, definitely go back and watch my last video. But for a quick rundown, this is a pressed glitter pigment eyeshadow formula. They are so complex, so twinkly, so glittery, and there are four different shades. Um, I will share swatches here. So there's Hue, which is a purpley shade. There's Spectra, which is a navy. There's the shade Mood, which is a bronzy brown. And the shade Illusion, which is a duochrome peachy pinky gold. I'm wearing the shade Mood today, and this is actually much more complex than just a typical bronze. There are actually um, gold and purple glitters in this. So the base of this is a rather cool toned brown. It looks actually a little bit warmer in the pot than it is on the skin, at least on my skin tone. But it has a really complex reflective quality to it. There's a bit of smokiness to it. And to me, this is another perfect one and done eyeshadow shade because you get that depth from the base, but as you blend it out, you get um, the twinkly particles that sort of scatter across the eye and you can build it up to be a little bit more dramatic or you can sheer it out for a wash of color. I like the balance of shades in this collection. There's the fun shades, so that navy and the purple, which is probably the shiniest in this collection. But then you also have these more neutral wearable shades in the shade Illusion, this peachy pink duochrome, and the shade I'm wearing today.
Then I have the new Make Newish Make Beauty Micro Suede Powder Blushes, and I don't think I've had a chance to talk about these on YouTube yet. Um, these launched maybe last month, and they launched like 12 shades. It was a really big collection. There's a really cool curation of shades from light to deep with lots of different undertones. Um, I wanted to pull a couple of my favorites now that I've had a chance to test out all the different shades. This is part of their Micro Suede line. So if you tried their Micro Suede bronzer, it has a very similar silky powdery feel to it. And these also come in a magnetic palette. They chose the red compact for this. I think it's really beautiful. And the shade that I'm wearing today is actually Celestial Rose, and this has been the one that I've worn the most by far. I don't know how they describe this shade on the website, but I thought when I opened this, it would be kind of like a Laura Mercier Fresco, one of those beigey rose shades, but it actually has more punch and brightness on the skin, and I really like that. I'm wearing it all over my cheeks today, very generously, and you can wear it in a sheer way that gives you more of that beige rose, but if you build it up, you get a touch more brightness coming through. And this is a great everyday shade for me personally. This one has also been beautiful. It's called New Moon. And there's a bit of red to it and a bit of pink. And it's a little bit more saturated than Celestial Rose. There's a brightness to this that Celestial Rose doesn't have. I also love the shade Amber Glow, which is more of a punchy coral and definitely a summer shade, but I've been wearing it anyway. So these have definitely been my three. Let me show you them side by side. So I have Celestial Rose, New Moon, and Amber Glow, and this is what they look like side by side. You can really see the difference in the undertones, but um, between these three, it's pretty much all all I, all I need in a blush collection. And these have definitely been the standouts for me from that collection. For those of you that like a liquid or cream blush, I have really been enjoying the Euphoria BYO blush in their new shades. So this is their blush oil formula. It has gone viral on TikTok. It's um, something I tested earlier this year. It's like a green oil that changes color to like a bright pink on the cheeks. And I'm really glad they launched um, colors, actual shades of this formula because the BYO blush formula was a little bit too bright for my personal taste. I also feel like these are less oily <laughs> than the original formula. I don't know if that's just my skin that's changed. It's been a while since I've tried it, but I feel like these are a little bit more user-friendly personally. So there are three new shades. This first shade, the top shade, is called Butt Tonight, and this is a really beautiful brownie rose. And the middle shade is called Turn Up the Sunshine. The bottom shade is called Let's Go Party. And I have liked all three of these, but I've especially liked these two. So the brown shade, But Tonight, and the more pinky shade, Let's Go Party. I actually have layered these two where I did use But Tonight like on the back of my cheeks, and I used Let's Go Party towards the apple of my cheeks and I really liked the way they looked together. I like to apply these on the back of my hand and then pick it up with a brush and pounce it on the cheeks, but you can apply it directly to the cheeks if you want. It's pretty mistake proof because it's a relatively sheer formula, and I just really like the color curation, especially the brown shade. Euphoria also just launched an Ulta, which is really exciting. Um, I like their setting spray, I like their primer, um, I like that they have a pretty tightly curated edit of products and they've been really intentional about what and how they launch. So yeah, these have been a favorite. I finally opened up the Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water Tubing Mascara. And I know I've been talking about this tubing mascara roundup forever. There are just so many. I think I just need to give myself an, an edit of like five tubing mascaras so I can review these for you finally. But I really, really, really like this and it was highly recommended by so many of you. If you like a tubing mascara but you want a little bit more volume, you want a little bit more drama, this is the one for you. So it actually surprisingly has a pretty narrow wand. 
It's um, bristly, like not plastic, it has fiber bristles, but it's not a very thick wand. It gives you just enough ability to comb through the lashes, but I was really surprised at how volumizing this product is. And something that I look for in a tubing mascara formula is something that doesn't dry down too quickly, so you have time to build and create the shape of your mascara before it sets down. Because once a tubing mascara sets down, you really can't add to it without it getting cakey or flaky. It lasts all day on me, it doesn't smudge, it's a tubing mascara so it's easier to remove than your conventional mascaras and I really like this for building volume. So if that's something that you look for but you have a hard time finding with other tubing mascaras, I think this is definitely worth a shot. And I think that's why it's been such a crowd pleaser because it really gives you a big bad lash but it still is a tubing mascara. My final favorite is the lipstick that I'm wearing today, and this was something that I picked up towards the end of the Sephora sale, and it's the new Dior Rouge Forever formula in the shade 200 Nude Touch. This shade was going in and out of stock like every two hours, so I finally saw it in stock and I picked it up. It's a really, really beautiful um, yellow undertone caramely shade. It's nude, but it has that like grunge factor to it that makes it um, sort of an edgy brown toned nude. It's perfect for winter, it's perfect for fall. It's exactly the kind of brown toned lip that I go for. And this is a new Dior formula. It's really, really impressed me. It's a satin finish, but it goes on the lips in a very thin but pigmented way. It's creamy to apply, and it's super pigmented with one application. It doesn't set down to like a liquid lip finish. It stays comfortable on the lips, but it just has this grippy, qual this like thin grippy quality to it that lets you know it's going to be on for the rest of the day. If you eat or drink, of course, you might lose some color towards the center of your lip, but then it's easy to reapply without um, seeing exactly where you applied it. Like you can reapply it in a graceful way. So yeah, I really like this formula. I think if you're looking for a long wear lip for work, for a special event, but you want to feel comfortable and you want something that won't budge or smear around your lip lines, this is a really, really nice formula. I think this would actually be a perfect formula for a red lip because of that longevity and the fact that it sets down but it doesn't move. Um, it would be a perfect red lip lipstick, but I'm also really happy with this shade because it's the kind of thing that I can wear all the time. Let's talk about skincare. I have really been focusing on hydration and calming the skin. I think with the weather cooling down, um, using tretinoin, I've had a bit of dehydration, a little bit of occasional peeling because of the tret. So I've been really focusing on nourishing the skin. So when Paula's Choice came out with their new Calm collection, it could not have come out at a better time. They released this collection in collaboration with Gothamista, Renee, and it is every single product I've tried from this line is amazing. And I rarely say that about a full skincare line, so it really surprised me. This line really focuses on calming, soothing ingredients like allantoin, there's peptides, there's um, ceramides in this line, so it very much is the kind of thing that every skin type can use, but especially more sensitized skins will really appreciate. First is the Ultra Gentle Cleanser, and this is, um, un the whole thing is unscented, the whole line. This is a gel cleanser, but it's like a rich, creamy gel. It's perfect for your first cleanse in the morning, perfect for a second cleanse. I wouldn't use this to remove makeup or sunscreen, but I always use a first cleanser at the end of the day. It's just um, the right amount of creaminess with a gel cleanser, and it leaves your skin actually feeling hydrated after you use it. Then there's the Repairing Serum with Ceramides and Beta-Glucan. This is probably my most used product of this line because I've just been slathering it on morning and night. It's a hydrating serum, but it has a really nice um, gel-like bouncy quality. 
So that's the texture right there. It's not a watery serum, you can tell. It actually has a bit of body to it and it just really feels like a hug on the skin. It's really nice because it's hydrating, it's calming, it just gives me um, a nice like drink of water, but it actually feels like it sticks around rather than you know a watery essence or a watery toner. This actually feels like it's giving me some protection on the skin. I can already tell I'm gonna run out of this quickly because it feels significantly lighter than when I first got it, but I think if you're gonna get anything from the line, this is the star. Then, this really interested me. This is the 1% BHA Sensitive Skin Exfoliant. It has salicylic acid and allantoin, and this was so shocking to me because I feel like I've followed Gothamista Renee for many years, and we have very different skin types. She has more mature skin, she has drier skin, and I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum with combo oily skin. But the fact that she worked with them to formulate a gentle salicylic acid product was so exciting. So this has 1% salicylic acid rather than the 2%, which is what their gray bottle, the liquid formula is. So it's a lower concentration, so it's less irritating if that's something that you struggle with and less drying. It also comes in this pump and it's housed in this gel cream formula. So you're actually moisturizing and hydrating the skin as you're applying BHA and it gives you a really elegant experience on the skin. I mentioned before that I use tretinoin, which is a prescription strength retinoid, and that does leave my skin pretty dry sometimes, but as someone who's oily, I also like to have salicylic acid in my routine to balance the oils. And so this has actually been perfect because it gives me that touch of salicylic that I need, but it also adds hydration to the skin and it's calming at the same time. So it's a pretty brilliant formula in my opinion, and I'm so happy to have it in my routine. I use this maybe twice a week. I alternate nights with tretinoin. Sometimes I take a night off, um, so I don't use it all the time, but it's been the perfect balance for my routine. The last item is the Rescue and Repair Intensive Moisturizer, which with hexapeptide 8 and glycogen. Don't know what those are. I mean, I know what peptides are, but anyway, this is a really nice um, occlusive moisturizer. So it's rich, but it's not overly greasy feeling. It actually has a nice like satin finish once you blend it in. So you can see it's pretty thick and it does feel like a barrier cream. It has a really nice um, comforting feeling on the skin. So I really like this in the evening because it seals in all of that hydration, all of that goodness, and I feel like it's gonna stay on my skin throughout the night. I've actually surprisingly even used this during the day because it has that really nice like smooth silky finish and it worked really really nicely under makeup. Even for someone like me with combo skin, it wasn't too thick to feel like it's clogging my pores or I'm wearing or I'm slugging or something like that. It has occlusive properties without being too too heavy. So Honestly, home run, I love this line. I can recommend every single product. There is another cream that is um, also calming, also soothing, but different. So this is the Coco Kind Resurrection Polypeptide Cream. This launched earlier this month. And this is such a fun and unique texture. I think if you're looking for something maybe a little bit lighter than this, but still moisturizing, this is a great option. So it contains peptides and it's this really interesting purple color and it's this like gel pudding like texture so let me get some out so when you get some out it's like that on the skin it's thick but it's like a rich pudding kind of texture and it has this really beautiful texture that starts to get a little bit grippy as it sets down. It's really interesting. It starts out feeling emollient and then it like sets down onto the skin. So I really feel like in the evening it holds in moisture, but under makeup, it's really nice too. It's actually a really good, almost grippy primer for base products because of the texture. It's really unlike anything I've tried before. And Coco Kind, of course, is very affordable. They are at 
Are they at Ulta now? I think so. They're also at Target. You can get it on their website. And this has been a major home run for me. I've just been alternating between this and this, and my skin has been really, really happy. Let's talk about hair. I have some new things in my routine, some old favorites, but some new favorites as well, including this wash duo. So this is from a brand called Salt Hair and Salt Air, Salt Hair, I don't, I'm not sure. I've recently gotten into some of their products. I really love their body oil. I love their body creams and lotions, but they just launched hair care last month and this duo has been so nice. This is their um, Recover and Restore line and it's made for damaged hair. So I have color treated hair, I have dry hair because of the bleach. The packaging is obviously nice. It's um, aluminum with a pump and you get great value for money. So this is, these are each $12 for 14 ounces, which I think is really good for a slightly, it's like slightly more elevated than drugstore, but it's not luxury hair care. This line, the Recover and Restore line, actually contains bond repair ingredients to help strengthen the hair while you're washing it. And it smells incredible. They say that the scent of this is Pacific Pear, but I actually get more of like a creamy vanilla, but sometimes woods note. It's not like a fruity fruit and it's not um, quite a woods. There's just a very expensive <laughs> scent to this, even though it's not an expensive duo. And I really just like inhale it every time. The shampoo is really nice because you get a really thorough lather. This cuts through product. Um, if I have a lot of dry shampoo in, it feels like I'm getting a really thorough clean and a nice lather, but it also doesn't dry out my hair, which is really nice. And I feel like a lot of damage or repair lines um, have shampoos that aren't quite cleansing enough. And I like that this gives me a really deep cleanse. And then the conditioner feels like a hair mask. It's very rich, it's creamy, it's yummy. I do feel like I have really shiny, soft feeling hair after I use this duo. So it's just been a real highlight of my shower experience. And then a surprising development to me is that I've been really into blow drying my hair lately, which is funny because I feel like I didn't blow dry my hair. I was air drying my hair for like two or three years. And just recently I got a little bit bored with curling my hair. I wanted something different. My hair is really long right now. It's um almost like below the boob. And I wanted something that was going to give me volume and movement, even though I have long hair because my hair is very thick and heavy. <laughs> I have a lot of hair. So I've gone back to my trusty Amika blow dry brush. And if you're not familiar with this, it's a brush that um, shoots out hot air. I've loved this in the past, but I love it even more now because it gives you that bouncy blowout look without the round brush and the blow dryer. So I love the oval shape. And it also is dual fiber. So you get the um, like fibery bristles as well as the plastic bristles. And it actually holds onto your hair really well as you're blow drying it. And it gives you a really good grip and you're able to move the hair through the blow dry brush and twist it. I actually filmed a blow dry routine that I'll share here or I'll link below. And it just gives me a lot of control. I also like that it has a couple of different settings. So you get just the blow dry, you get a low heat and you get a high heat. And I usually go on low heat once my hair is about 50% air dried. If you have struggled, if you want the bouncy blow dry look, but you've struggled with a round brush because most of us don't actually have the coordination of a hairstylist, I think you'll really like this because it gives you that control, that maneuverability to get that blow dry look at home. And I, I don't know about you, but I've just never been able to achieve that with a round brush on myself. So yeah, this has been uh, another favorite that I've used all the time this month. I think that's it for me today. There have been um, fragrances and candles that I've loved, but I think I'm going to do a winter holiday fragrance roundup because they're all falling under that umbrella and I have a lot of exciting new things to share. But I hope you have a great final month of 2022. I cannot believe we're here. It's December, this year completely flew by. I also wanna say thank you because in November, 
Um, we surpassed 10,000 subscribers here on my channel, and I know that's not a big number, obviously, compared to these, like, big mega channels, but I have been posting on here in earnest regularly just a bit over a year, and it's been such a joy. I just really like long-form content. I like feeling like I actually get to go a little bit deeper than I get to go on Instagram or TikTok, and... It's just something I really look forward to. It's never lost on me how valuable people's time is and your time is, so the fact that you choose to spend some of that time watching my videos and hanging out with me just means more than I'll really ever be able to express on on YouTube. So thank you so much. I'm excited to see what is in store in the future. So have a great month. Enjoy your holiday season. Be healthy, be happy, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.